Testing, testing. Good morning, West Croydon Baptist Church and all the friends who have come to visit us this morning. I hope you're well. Um, I just want to start off this morning's service by reading two um, passages from the scripture. The first is Psalm 52, verses 8 to 9. But I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people. And I will hope in your name, for your name is good. The second is from 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 47 to 50. The Lord lives, praise be to my rock. Exalted be my God, the rock of my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who puts the nations under me, who sets me free from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes. From a violent man you rescued me, therefore I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing the praises of your name. So this morning we are lifting up the name of Jesus, the, our Savior, our rock. And so I'll hand over to the worship team to lead us in a time of worship. Redeemer, 
Sing that chorus again, if we can. I stand in awe. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Please be seated. I'm just going to take us through some of the notices. So last week, <clears throat> last week Sunday, we were supposed to have our AGM. I don't know if some of you are unaware, but we had to postpone that because we didn't have enough numbers. So we'll um, be announcing again when a new date has been set. Uh, there aren't any other main sort of notices to call out. There, most of the notices are um, delivered, if you like, via the newsletter. 
if you don't receive the newsletter, please do let us know, let one of the deacons know, um, and we'll make sure you get signed up. If you are able to contact Esther in the church office, that's another way of getting your email address registered on the list. Um, good morning and welcome to those who came since the beginning of the service. It's lovely to see you, lovely to have you here. Uh, I'll just draw your attention. We have connect cards. Uh, if there's anyone who is visiting with us, it doesn't have to be for the first time, but if we can support you in any way in your faith walk, please do fill in a card and drop it in the box at the back, just at the back on my right, your left. Uh, we've got two of our members who would like to share with you some initiatives that um, they want you to get involved with. So I'd like to call Simon up first. He's going to talk to us about um, a vaccine project. Hello, can you all hear me? Good. Yes, about, this is um, con concerning the, the vaccine. And what, I'll just read a, a little bit of, of the background so you understand. Croydon's Infrastructure Support Service Partnership, ISS, that's including Asian Resource Centre Croydon, and they're the main ones who are running this, Croydon BME Forum, Neighbourhood Care Association, and others, and, and Voluntary Action have been awarded, uh, were awarded earlier this year, 74,000 pounds, which they distributed in small grants to groups. And I applied, and we were uh, given 5,000 pounds, which is uh, lodged with the RD, uh, Refugee Day, Day Center. And this is about holding meetings uh, to explore the concept of um, vaccine hesitancy, you know, some un unwillingness, and this is, going to be in the form of just get-togethers very informally and what you do is people who are in, in, interested in this subject um, come along at the beginning of a meeting you're given a questionnaire no names and you simply tick the boxes with your opinions on various questions they're collected we have a sort of question and answer session a discussion and then we repeat the questionnaire at the end so it's the same group but none of them can be identified because all you're doing is putting ticks on boxes. And then a lot of it, most of it, is listening to what people have to say, because we may not have all the answers. So we may co collect some of the comments that's made, and that we, by the way, is myself, Melanie, uh, Dr. Melanie, and Joyce, Dr. Joyce. Hello, uh, she's over there. Melanie here? No? Anyway. Um, and then probably be followed up by another meeting, and then we... Um, uh, to, to go in further detail on some of those questions. Um, the first meeting we're proposing is after church, that's the best time to get people, on July the 24th. Uh, what we then do, it will be going to, to other churches in, the, we're looking at the immediate area, and it's amazing how many, how many churches that are literally around the corner. I didn't know, do you know there's a Seventh-day Adventist church in Union Road, they run a food bank, and so we're gonna be going to, from church to church, repeating the same thing. Thank you. Simon, so if anyone wants to get involved with that, Simon is the person you need to get in touch with. Next up is Sister Patience. Is going to be telling us about Kiwi and a, a special event coming up. Good morning, church. Bless you all. Uh, just briefly, uh, just want to talk to you about Kiwi, uh, Kingdom Impact Vision International. Uh, I've spoken about this several times, about what we do, uh, why the pictures or video is coming on. I just, uh, last Saturday we went to Basel, uh, yeah, Gillingham and Chatham. About 59 of us, 106 people gave their life to the Lord. Isn't that amazing? God is an awesome God. Yeah, uh, yeah, praise God. So many people are going to hell. Uh, we need to keep snatching them out of the door of hell. Praise God. Is it coming on?
Okay. While that is happening, I'll just show you this. Uh, this flyer will be out at the back of the church uh, for you all to take. It's all about uh, what is happening on the 30th of July uh, this month. Please get involved if you can. It's for, there's no age limit. Yeah, everyone is called commissioned to, to preach the gospel. So what it is, all churches in United Kingdom, the 33 boroughs, uh, coming together for one purpose in Marbolage, uh, yeah, Marbolage Mond. Yeah, we'll be gathering there for 12 o'clock uh, and then uh, go spread around the whole of the city to go and preach the gospel, uh, going to different locations like Leicester Square and different areas uh, to go and preach the gospel. This will be believers from different churches all over London, uh, the 33 boroughs. We have scouted it and every church has been informed. Well, most of the churches have been informed. So please feel free to take one. Uh, if you want to know more about it, there are meetings there with the um, Zoom link on it. So you can join just to have an idea what happens before the 30th of, uh, of July. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, when we go on the street, a lot happens on the street. Uh, sometimes you, get, you meet people that are very aggressive. Uh, there are people that hate the gospel, uh, that will try to talk down to you. I watched a video yesterday where a guy was ministering and somebody just went there and grabbed the Bible. And about five of them began to kick the Bible all around on the floor. I have the video on my phone. And he kept telling them, this is, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, it, it's not right, you know, it's evil. Uh, but they didn't care. They were, you know, and then one of them picked the Bible up and ran to the next toilet and threw it inside the toilet. If that was a Muslim Quran, I'm telling you, uh, what will happen to those people? I, I won't want to mention it. But you know what? We are, that we are not stopping. We have to keep preaching the gospel. We have to keep telling them because God is able to fight for himself. So the reason for this, please, uh, you know, take note, is we have Christian concern uh, that comes to educate us about our rights. Even in Croydon there, I have been confronted. Police have been called to me. And because I know my rights, I was able to stand before them and tell them, uh, what the law says, what I'm permitted to do. And uh, yeah, you have to know what you're doing. You have to understand what you, you know, uh, you have the rights to do so that they don't run you over with their own uh, ways and try to stop you. That's the assignment of the enemy to try and stop the gospel from being preached. Uh, that's the number one assignment the enemy has. So it's very important. If you take the flyer, you are interested. If you have concerns about going on the streets to preach the gospel, if you are already on the streets, you know, preaching the gospel, even if you're not part of Kiwi, please take the details. Uh, if you need uh, more information, contact me, and 
uh, I will be able to give you the link. But if you take the details from there, uh, you should be able to uh, connect. It's next Saturday uh, on Zoom. Next Saturday, you don't have to come out of your home. So you'll be, you'll be educated, you are allowed to ask questions, but the questions has to go in uh, on the platform before the day so that they can prepare how many questions can be answers, answered. The meeting is going to last for about two to three hours because there's a lot to cover uh, to protect believers and to give believers understanding of what they are entitled to. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Patience. Can, can I just say I've been on about four stormings now with Kiwi, and they are absolutely wonderful. You, you come out of your comfort zone. Um, it's wonderful to be among believers from all sorts of churches. And as you give out, you are filled up. So if anyone's interested in going on a storming, I would highly recommend it. So see you on the 30th of July. Right, so, July babies. Can I just see a show of hands for anyone who was born in the month of July and who's celebrating a birthday this month? Two? Okay, three? Okay, Kathy, when's yours? 11th, and over here, Noel? 12th, okay. Okay, so in a true family birthday style, we're going to sing happy birthday. And as usual, I'm not going to start off because I can't sing. So someone else has to start off for us, please. Worship team. I hope all of you enjoy your special day when it comes. May the Lord bless you. Right, so um, the only thing left to say is just a reminder about church giving and the fact that we have our offering plates at the back um, on either side, and you can also give online. So we appreciate any gift, big or small, because obviously we need those funds to keep the church running, particularly with the, the high utilities expenses, etc. So um, just a reminder that you can give your offering online or at the plates at the back when you are um, leaving this morning. Okay, are there any testimonies this week? Okay, Juliet, yep, come on up. So we know that our God is a good God and we always in the midst of everything, we, we often find that it's hard to give thanks but we do anyway, we try to anyway. So if God has done anything for you in the last week, please do feel free to come up and share that with us. Anybody else? No, okay, well thank you. Thank you guys for sharing with us. That was wonderful. So we're gonna go into a time of prayer. Um, and as I was reflecting on what we should pray about today, I thought in keeping with the theme of lifting up the name of Jesus, um, recognizing him for who he is in our lives. I thought I would structure the prayer around the, some of the names of Jesus. So we know in the Bible there are several names of Jesus, I think over a hundred, but I've chosen just a few to guide us through our prayers. So let us pray. Jesus, Emmanuel, Isaiah 7:14. Lord, you are with us. Whether we are going through a mountaintop experience or we are deep in the valley, Lord, you are a constant source of comfort and support. Be with those who are anxious. Be with those who are fearful. Be with those who are stressed. Be with those who are discouraged at this time. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. I'll say again, let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Jesus, 
our good shepherd, John 10, 11. We are your sheep, your flock, the ones you care dearly for, love unconditionally, who guides us, protects us, provides for us. Lord, we give you thanks for who you are and whose we are. We give you thanks for your compassion. We give you thanks for your faithfulness. We give you thanks for your mercies every day. Jesus, the true vine, John 15, verse 1. You are the vine, we are the branches. We ask that the Holy Spirit will help us to stay connected to you. Whether we are new or more mature believers, so that we will be equipped, so that we will be enabled to be productive, bearing good fruit. Jesus, our advocate, 1 John 2, verse 1. Thank you, Lord, that we have that assurance that each time we mess up or get it horribly wrong and we ask for your forgiveness, you plead our case before God. You are always on our side. Help us not to be desensitized to sin. And finally, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, verse 6. With so much going on in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our countries, often even in our families, often in our own minds, in this world, Lord, we are reminded you are the source of peace. You are our shalom, the peace that passeth all understanding. Help us to lean on you, O Lord, and your avatar and your everlasting arms. All this we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. So I think it's time for the kiddies to go to Kid Zone. Have a great time. And now I'll invite Brother Deji Ayorindi from Pollard's Hill Baptist Church to come and share with us what God has laid on his heart. So we welcome you, we thank you. you we were chatting earlier and you say you, know, you're, you are no stranger to this church, so we welcome you again. Thank you for blessing us. Good morning, church. One of my favorite verses in the entirety of the word of God is from Psalm 118. Psalm 118, I think it's verse 24. Um, says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Do you know that verse? And in that verse, God calls us to do what? Rejoice. Rejoice. And I truly Rejoice that I am here today with you. Um, it's always a joy to be with, with West Croydon Baptist Church, WCBC family. It's always a joy. I bring you kingdom greetings from your brothers and sisters at Pollard's Hill Baptist Church, just up the road. Um, and of course, let me, let me bring you the greatest of congratulations as a church family because the work that you have done, the prayers you have raised, the trust that you have had in God uh, over the season uh, you've just come through. I, I know that, that that prayer has been answered as a church and you're on the threshold of a new season of God's calling and God's mission uh, in what he has called you to be. Um, I'm sure that over the period um, of, of seeking, that period of praying, that period of asking, uh, 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 talking, uh, agreeing and disagreeing over the last few years, and then agreeing again. Um, ultimately, in that time, I'm sure you will have been asking, Lord, your will be done, correct? Well, God has shown himself, and uh, we will see 
his will unfold in and through this church in Jesus' name. Um, before I proceed, let us pray. Dear Lord God, I just really want to give you thanks. Thank you, Father, for a good day, a new day, um, a start again as we come before you. Father, I bring myself before your throne. Lord, as I speak, yes, they hear my voice, but beyond me, let them hear you, Lord. I pray, Father, that that which you have given me to share today will truly be life and spirit in the, in, in, for everyone who hears it, and may it work for their good and for the glory of your name. Thank you, Lord God. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to um, ask you a question. Um, I want to ask you a question before I proceed. Can, let, me, let me see, can I have a show of hands if you have ever prayed um, for God's will to be done? Show of hands. Anybody who's ever prayed for God's will to be done? Okay, that's everybody, right? Now, now uh, and the reason I kept my hand up is because I've also prayed that prayer. So let me ask you a different question and think carefully about this next, ask you a different question. Think carefully about this next question and answer truthfully. Can I have a show of hands if you have ever wanted your own will to be done? Where you want your will to be, even when you're praying, you've wanted your will to be done. Okay, me too. Today, I want to talk a little bit about prayer, and I'm going to use the story of the prophet Jonah and, uh, and talk about how when we pray, it is important that we address the question, whose will be done? So there's an expression, and the expression is, just pray about it. Have you ever heard that? Just pray about it. Sometimes people will say that. Think about a situation that you are in. Maybe you were in a, pl a place of, of distress, a place of need, a place of difficulty. Um, or maybe that's where you are now, a place of desperation even. And you've been told, just pray about it. Maybe your place of desperation caused you to, to, to get some support, to seek support, uh, maybe counseling. Talk to somebody. Uh, you spoke to a friend, a family member, so, you know, someone in the, in the church. Um, a fellow Christian, you told them what you were facing. You told them the difficulty that is before you. Um, and, you know, when you told them about uh, whatever it was, you know, the, 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 you told them about that time where you'd had too much month left at the end of your money. Or you told them about that relationship thing or that job thing, that work incident that, that, that's happened with your manager and it's causing you stress and distress. You're not sure whether you should remain in the job or whether you should stay or you should go, you know. Um, maybe it's a relationship thing. Maybe it's, um, uh, you're, maybe you're single uh, and you, you want to be in a relationship. Maybe you're in a relationship, you want to be married. Maybe you're married and you wish you were single again. I, you, <laughs> I'm just being real. West Croydon Baptist Church, you know me. I'm just being real here. Maybe that's what you're facing and you, you ask them this stuff and you shared these things with this person and they answer you, just pray about it. Because when we pray, things always immediately turn out right, don't they? No? They always, you know, just pray about it. Yeah, 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 that's it. Blue pill, red pill. Just pray about it. It's done. Yep, it's over. Well, today, when we look at the prayer of Jonah, Jonah was a prophet. Jonah was a prophet. You know, and theologians have him as the, one of the minor, the 12 minor prophets. Um, and his, the book of Jonah tells the story of, or, or some of the story, or most of the story of his life. It's split into four chapters. And as some of you will know, you can actually, the whole of Jonah, actually, if you put chapters one and two as the first half, chapters three and four as the second half of Jonah, I actually discovered you can summarize that first half in three sentences from Jonah chapter 1. If you take three sentences, Jonah chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3, you've summarized the whole of, verse, of chapters 1 and 2. Um, 
So these, these three sentences, here they are. So Jonah chapter 1, uh, the three sentences taken from there. The first one, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of, son of Amittai. That's from verse 1. From verse 2, go to the great city of Nineveh, preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me, says the Lord. Um, from verse 3, Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. That's it. Those three sentences tell you they summarized chapters 1 and chapter 2 of Jonah. It's amazing, isn't it? You can see it clear. This guy was not going to do what God told him to do. Um, he was disobedient. He wasn't going to, he was, he, well, some people will say he was disobedient. I put it this way, and I think I've said this before. He was following the 11th commandment. Do you remember the 11th commandment? The 11th commandment says, God can say whatever he wants. I'm going to go do whatever I want. That's the 11th commandment. So this dude was following the 11th commandment. Yeah. So our text for today is actually rooted in chapter 2, which is part of Jonah's first half. And it happened when he, he, you know, he went to do that, that thing. He went to fulfill the 11th commandment. Uh, this is the bit that happened after he ran away. After he ran away from God, when he was in his disobedience, as it were. He had the choice. He had the choice to follow what God had said, but he chose not to follow. He chose to run. You know, here in England, and, and, and before I say that, you know, when he ran away, he, he got himself into a spot of bother, didn't he? Uh, those of you who know the story, and that's a very English way of saying it. He got himself into a spot of bother. Um, a, a spot of bother. Is that English enough? Anything else? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, but but, 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 but I'm, I'm Nigerian. I was born there. I grew up there. You know, I, when we came to this country 40 odd years ago, we lived in Sussex, East Sussex. <laughs> it was wonderful. Absolutely. Trust me. Um, but in Nigeria, we don't say a spot of bother. The man got into some wahala. <laughs> I'm sure there are a couple of Nigerians here at least. The Americans have their own way of saying it sometimes. Well, I think it might be a British thing as well. You know, they say he got himself into a foxhole. Um, this guy got stuck. He was desperate. He was stuck in this hole. And then he did what? He prayed. He got stuck. He was desperate to get out. And he prayed. Let me lay something out for you. When we pray, we communicate with God. You know this. You know this. And these words, uh, uh, which are taken from, uh, that, from, from, from Jonah uh, 2, tell us, Sometimes the words that we pray carry impact. And you can see it in what he is doing. When we pray, and the best way we can pray, we, we've, everybody here has prayed at one point or another, right? The best prayer you can pray is God's word. Do you know why? God's words mean more to God than anything else. And if his words mean more than anything else, the best words you can use in prayer are his words. Do you understand what I mean? So look at what Jonah is doing in this prayer. He's actually referencing the scriptures. He says, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help and you listened to my cry. Now compare that, and why I said he's referencing the scriptures, because that text is rooted in the Psalms. Psalm 120 in verse 1, he says, I call on the Lord in my distress, and he answers me. And invariably, a prophet like Jonah would have read the text. He would have known the scriptures. If you look at verse 6 of our text, he says, But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. And then compare that with Psalm 130, verse 2 and 4, where he says, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, and redeems your life from the pit. So as Jonah is praying these words, he's referencing, he's pulling in his understanding of Scripture. And if we look finally at verse 8 of Jonah 2, it tells us those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. How is that not the same as Psalm 31 in verse 6 where he says, I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, 
I trust in the Lord. And so when, when Jonah's cry, that, that prayer that he prays and he starts to say these things, he's, 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 he's referencing the scriptures. He's rooting that prayer in his understanding of what God has already said and done. And what we see in, this, in these prayers is what happens to us when we learn to meditate on the word of God. Through the service today, so many things were said. And even though we weren't formally reading from Scripture, so many things were said where you could hear references to Scriptures. Scripture verses quoted and woven through the words that were being used through the service. There's a saying, there's an old saying. It says, um, you are what you eat. Have we heard that before? You are what you eat. And it doesn't just apply to physical food. It also applies to spiritual food. You are what you eat. And, and the truth of it is, when we're in a place of distress, when we're in a place of desperation, uh, uh, Scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, from the depth of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay. And so when we're in that place of difficulty, place of desperation, what happens is what's in our heart comes to the surface. And I'm sure many of you have experienced it before where without realizing it, you're just quoting scriptures. Yeah. A scripture you perhaps didn't realize was there. So Jonah prayed. And when he prayed, out of the abundance of his heart, he referenced the Psalms. But I, you know there are different types of, types of prayer. And I wonder, when Jonah prayed these prayers, you know, our, the theological, you know, uh, or, 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 yeah, in, in church we, we put prayers in different categories. You know that, yeah? So I wonder what type of prayer was this. Um, was it a prayer of confession? Was it a prayer of intercession? Was it a, a prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer of supplication, was it? Well, I can tell you, this prayer was none of those things. It was none of those things. We know, saints, that God responds to the prayers of faith. He responds when we come in faith. He responds to faith. Jonah prayed a prayer of desperation. It doesn't mean he wasn't desperate. It doesn't mean he didn't pray. But it was a prayer of desperation. And as I said, God responds to faith. God does not respond to desperation. It doesn't matter how desperate we are. It doesn't matter. That makes no difference. Honestly, it actually makes no difference to God how desperate we are. What makes the difference, desperation or not, difficulty or not, is how much faith we have, even in our place of desperation. Think about this. So, in Jesus' day, so many people were desperate. So many. But he responded to those who responded by faith, not by desperation. You know, let me say this to you. Some of us here, some of you listening now, even if you're listening online, are in a place of desperation. There's something that you're desperate for, an answer that you're desperate for. Let me assure you in the first instance that God can hear you. God does hear you. But what he wants is for you to respond in faith. Even as difficult and dark, as desperate as things may be, you need to activate your faith. That belief that he can, that belief that he will. And the truth of it is, even when we pray for others, or whether we pray for ourselves or for others, it doesn't matter how desperate we are or they are. It is the faith that is exercised by them or by us that, that God, that moves God. I think it was Charles Spurgeon that said, um, faith is the slender muscle that moves the mighty hand of God. Not desperation, faith. 
So as I said, you know, Jonah's prayer in our text is a prayer of desperation. He was highly expectant for an answer. Um, so now I want us to look again at his prayer. Whilst he was indeed quoting, at the, quoting the scriptures, I want us, yes, he was quoting the scriptures, but I want us to look at some of the things he was saying. So at the beginning he says, from the realm of the dead, I called for help. He said, I've been banished from your sight, in verse chapter 2, verse 4. He says, you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you in your holy temple. Verses 6 and 7. These are words of desperation. Now, let me show you something that's very characteristic of prayers of desperation. The blame game. The blame game. Oftentimes, when people are really, really desperate, they're not thinking about themselves. It's the blame game. It's always something outside of them. For people who pray the prayer of desperation, they don't typically think about how they got there, particularly when it's self-inflicted. They don't think about the part they played in where they are. It's not a consideration. Look at Jonah's attitude. In verse 3 of chapter 2, he says, you hurled me into the depths of the sea, into the very heart of the seas. What? Did God chuck him into the sea? Those of you who know the story, was it? No. Is that what? No. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. That's not actually what happened. If you read chapter 1, you'll see that what happened was Jonah was on a boat with some people. And the people were, and they were wondering, and this boat was facing storms, and they were saying, hey, what's going on here? We haven't sinned. They were desperately trying to figure out what was going on. The ship was going to sink. And Jonah was like, well, actually, I'm the guy in disobedience. And so you're the guy. And they chucked him over the side. In chapter 2, he's now praying to God, you hurled me into the depths of the sea. Look at chapter 1, verse 12. It's on screen. He, 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 He tells them, you know, that's the reason, you know, Uh, 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 it was he, Uh I love that, he said, it's my fault, he says, that this great storm has come upon you. And yet, despite this, the next bit we see in chapter 2, he's trying to blame God. Despite the fact that his situation was rooted in his disobedience, despite the fact that (laughs) he asked them to throw him into the sea, instead of using it as a time for a prayer of maybe confession, He points the finger of blame. Instead of using it for thanksgiving that he's still alive, he says it's God's fault. He uses projection to shift the attention away from what he did to what he thinks God did wrong. Instead of asking for mercy, he reframes the narrative, blaming God for chucking him into the sea. Did you notice Earlier when we read that prayer, he did not ask for forgiveness, not once. Maybe you know someone that's done that. Maybe you know someone who does that. Maybe that person's you. People who approach God with a sense of self-entitlement, with a sense of my will be done. After all, I know who I am. People who see their own self-righteousness. Have you ever done that? And if you've done it, please don't do it. And if you're doing it, stop. Just stop. If this describes you, you need to change. Because that's what God wants for us. Listen to Jonah's words from the prayer. He says, I called to the Lord. In verse 2, then he goes, he says, "Uh, uh, uh, I called for help. He says, I will look again towards your holy temple. I remembered you, Lord. My prayer rose to you in verse 7. But look at this. Oh, yeah, no, too far. Back a bit. (laughs) Can you go back? There you go. Look at the highlights. I, 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 me, myself, and I, me, and my... I've been good. I do say so. It's true. I call to you. I called for help. I looked to you. I remembered you. My prayer rose to you. 
Who's the focus of this prayer? God himself. This guy was marking his own paper. Look what he says in verses 8 and 9. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. This guy is saying, I'm not like these other unbelievers who don't worship you. I know you. I'm better than that than, than them. I know you. Because I'm gonna sure I'm, I'm gonna follow you. I'm surely being faithful to you, Lord. I'm a faithful guy. I'm your guy. This dude was truly marking his own paper. He was patting himself on the back. Earlier on, I talked about how Jonah's problems in the first half of the story can be summarized in the first three, in three, sentence, three sentences from the opening verses. Well, guess what? Jonah's story didn't end here. It didn't end in this place of disobedience and arrogance. It didn't. There's a second half. And just as the first half can be summarized by three sentences from the first three verses, guess what? The second half can also be summarized by three sentences from the first three verses. So let me, let me, uh, uh, so the first sentence, if we, if we go to Jonah 1, yeah, the, 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 it says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the city of Nineveh, preach against it because the wickedness had come up before me. And then the third sentence, but Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. Now look at Jonah chapter 3 and we take the first sentence from each verse and you'll see. Here they are. Jonah 3 says, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh, proclaim the message I gave you. And verse 3, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Hallelujah. And right here, right there, in these verses, in these sentences, we see this amazing thing about our amazing God and his amazing ways and his amazing grace and the amazing blessings that he continues to bestow on us despite all of Jonah's nonsense, despite the arrogance, God still stepped in our God of mercy, our God of love. He stepped in. Jonah only had to call on God by faith. And God stepped in. All Jonah, all Jonah had to do was call on him. God doesn't expect us to, to be perfect before we come. The perfection is in him. It's not in us. It's not in our doing. It's not in our works. It's not in our righteousness. The best of our best to him are like filthy rags. As some of you will know, there are a number of types of prayer. There are different types of prayer. Um, as I said, thanksgiving, supplication, uh, a confession, intercession. Let me give you these two guides. and They're, they're quite simple. Um, the first guide is uh, when you pray, Try and fit, and some of you will know these. When you pray, fit your prayers into this, you know. Wow, thanks, help. Three words. In fact, there's a book, I think, titled Wow, Thanks, Help. Wow, thanks, help. Wow, thanks, help. When you pray is very, very simple. Yeah, put your prayers into one of these, these three. The wow prayer is the, Lord, look at what you've done. You are good. You are great. You are glorious. Your name is greatly to be praised. That you are the Lord above all lords. There is none like you. That's a wow prayer. The thanks prayer is for all you've done for me, Lord, I am grateful. You delivered me. You healed me. You protected me. You covered me. You provided for me. I can go and I can come. I slept and I woke. None of my doing. Thank you, Lord. I am grateful. I recognize you. I appreciate you, Lord. Because there is none like you. Thank you, Lord. That's the thanks. And the help is, I mean, who hasn't prayed a help prayer? <laughs> you, don't need a you don't need a demonstration of that. Help, Lord. A second guide for our prayers, a second guide, a simple one, is using the, the acronym PRAY. And again, some of you may know this. Praise, reflect, ask, yield. When you are praying, First of all, acknowledge who God is. Acknowledge his glory. Acknowledge his splendor. Acknowledge his power. Acknowledge his greatness. Then pause to reflect on what that means for you. 
pause to reflect on who you are in the light of God. Reflect on what we have done in the light of what he has done. And sometimes that that reflection causes us to repent and put things right. Then we get to the place where we ask. We place the order. Ask for what we want. And then finally, after we have asked him, yield, back off, get out of his way. Don't be a God unto yourself. After all, he knows what we want better than we could ever know it ourselves. I hope you find these, these useful. I mean, it's, it's, it'll be on YouTube later on. You can go back and, 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 you know, the wow, three different categories of prayer. And when you pray, praise, reflect, ask, and yield. Now, remember what I said earlier on. Jonah knew the word of God. Jonah knew God. I also pointed out that he was in a place of desperation. But desperation or not, he called unto God. And God stepped in. He called unto God because he knew God. He called unto God because of faith. Yes, he prayed a prayer of desperation, but he was a man of faith. And that faith triggered God and God stepped in. It was a faith that was built on the knowledge of the God that he had served. A faith faith built on the knowledge of the God that sent him. A faith built on the knowledge of the God that he had disobeyed. And when he called on God, Jonah knew that God would do it. God would step in. And God stepped in. And I want to say, as he stepped in for Jonah, it is my prayer that he will step in for you as well. In every situation that you may face, in every difficulty, every, every desperation that may come your way, he will step in for you as well. But you will need to cry out to him in faith. You will need faith to be the foundation, the bedrock of how you reach out to him. I've said here before, I think I've said this this, this phrase before, that God can actually help us with almost anything. Almost anything. And I say almost because... The one thing or the things that God cannot help us with are the things we don't bring to him. If we become a God unto ourselves, God is just so good, he will leave us to do that. (laughs) So sisters, brothers, bring your struggles to him. It may feel that, you know, things might be feeling overwhelming at the moment. I was speaking with someone earlier today who's in the throes of a new opportunity, new adventure, new journey. And we were talking about that. It may feel that that things might at times feel a little bit overwhelming, feel a little bit surreal. You say, Lord, is this actually happening to me? Maybe for you, you feel like you're drowning in a sea of troubles. Like you've been swallowed up by your circumstances. Maybe Maybe it was your own doing. Maybe you did it. You put yourself in this dodgy situation. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe a difficult difficulty in in your relationship is beginning to get to you. It's beginning to wear you down. Well, even if it is that you're struggling to get to grips with the rising prices, even if it's a money thing, I want to remind you that you're not alone. You are not alone. God has brought you to this church. God has brought you into this family of faith. And he didn't do it by accident. He didn't. He brought you here for a reason. So that you could be served in your time of need. So you can have somebody, find somebody that will journey with you and support you in your time of need. God loves you with a never-ending love. (laughs) And he wants to be involved in all areas, all parts of your life. Would you ask him? Would you yield all areas of your life to him? Tell him how you feel. Ask for the strength to go on. Give him an opportunity to show you how to overcome the stuff that you're facing. And then trust him as you journey on. Allow 
his will to be done in your life. Saints of God, he stepped in for Jonah. And I know that he has done the same for us. You know this through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, God already stepped in for us. Through Jesus, God stepped in for you, where you are. Despite you being even the worst of yourself, despite you also following the 11th commandment, through Jesus, he stepped in. Despite your particular, I don't know, uh, 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 um, um, your prayers not, not ticking a particular uh, a theological framework, your prayers might not be, a, 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 you know, this, a, a, a prayers of intercession and confession and supplication and all the other shuns. Maybe your prayer was just babbling, yet God stepped in for you. When you didn't make the grade, God stepped in for you through Jesus. When you were not humble, through Jesus Christ, God stepped in for you. Even when you were not grateful, he stepped in for you. When your words were not right, your attitude, your behavior wasn't right, God stepped in for you. And all you need to, to access the blessing that accompanies his stepping in is to accept Jesus, to live for him, choose to live in him, choose to live for him, choose to live in his will, Choose for his will, above all others, to be done in your life. And I'll end, this, end with this one thought. It's easy for us, it is so easy for us to say, we want God's will to be done in our lives. I want God's will to be done in my life. Well... Or we say we truly want to see God's will done in our lives. I leave you with this thought. For us to truly see God's will done in our lives, we must be ready for our will to be undone. To truly see God's will done you must be ready to see your will undone. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, that you always make a way. <laughs> You make a way, Lord, of escape from our situation, our circumstances. You even make a way for us to escape from the things we have done wrong. We thank you, Lord, that through Jesus you stepped in for us. And you call us today to reach out to you by faith. And Lord God, at this time we just want to pause and stop. And think about those times where we have followed the 11th commandment. Father, forgive us, Lord. Father, forgive us. Where we have been even willfully disobedient. Father, please forgive us, we ask. And as we yield ourselves, yield our hearts, minds, lives before you, Lord, we ask that truly, Father, your will be done in us. Your will be done. Help us, Lord God, to be our brothers and sisters keepers. Help us, Lord God, to truly be family, to come alongside one another, supporting one another, lifting one another's arms for the battle as we trust you for the provision and trust you for the journey. And as we do these things, Lord God, we trust and believe that in us and through us, you and only you will be glorified. And we ask all of this, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Let's all stand if we're able and worship together. Okay. 
be seated. So our final prayer for today is using the words from some words from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. I pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. I pray that I pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give him peace. Amen. Amen. Gracious to you, the Lord. To